So, good morning, boys and girls. We're going to do um, bat wings today or dragon wings. They're all pretty much the same, but dragon wings tend to be a little bit cooler um, and they have a lot of webbing in them. These are just some samples of colors. I'll talk to you about that at the end. Let's go ahead and get started. So there's several ways to make wings. One is your basic wing. So I'm going to show you how you just bring out the line longer and then bring out the line shorter. Then what you want to do is connect them with a curving line like this. This is where it attaches to the body and in every point you would draw a line back to the body like this. Now that is the most simple wing and it does look pretty cool if you do it. If you want to make it look more dramatic, all you have to do with these curved lines is make them curve in more. The more they curve in, the more dramatic it looks. So if I move that line so it's more like this, you can tell how this looks a little bit more dramatic. Okay, very much the same wing though. And you can make sub multiples of those. Most people though are interested in making the wings that have ribbing and joints. So we're going to do the first one as just one joint. So this is where it's attaching to the body. It's going to angle out and then curve a little bit like this. Okay. So what we're going to do is show the ribbing in it. This is kind of like the bones, even though I think it's cartilage. And then it comes out to a point like that. Okay. So that is the first ribbing, the joint. And then this is where the joint is. So the rest of them come out of this spot. So I'm just going to make some V-shaped skinny ribbings coming out of this. And you could make them much larger than mine. You could make many of them. You could make them much longer. All those are options. This is where it attaches to the body. So at this point, we're done with the basic structure. Sometimes you'll see a little cone spur kind of thing sticking off the edge here, which I think looks kind of cool like that. Um, have you ever watched the movie How to Train Your Dragon? Those were on there. So when you draw the webbing on this, the more dramatic you have it, the more it curves in. So we're, this is where we curve it in, in between, like this. So this is where it bends. This is one webbing of it, and then these all web together, and this is where it attaches, okay? So pretty cool. I think it can be really cool. Sometimes you will see where they will make this much longer and sometimes more curved. So it's up to you. I'm just gonna make it short for this demonstration, but I just wanted to mention it to you. If you really get into drawing um, dragon wings, you should really look up other artists on how they did it and just really get some different ideas. But I'm gonna give you some basic ideas. The third one has a double joint, okay? And this is really common. It's to kind of give you the feeling of a hand, a forearm, and then above your elbow which is three areas. So it's to give you that, it does make them look a little creepier when they attach to you. So what happens is this is where it attaches. So it's going to joint down, then it's going to joint up. And this one you can curve it or you can just make it straight, both work. I'm going to leave it open to put a little um, cone there. So here's my straight one, okay. And then you see us, the ribbing will do this. It'll go down. I'm going to leave it open to attach the ribbing. And it'll come up here, leaving it open there. And I'm going to leave it open there. And then I'm going to go out to a point. So what happens right here, it's where the, sometimes you'll see the little fatty skin like this with a little bit of a cone sticking out of it. In the movie, How to Train Your Dragon, that's how it is. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and put another point here. And then, just like this one, a bunch of points, okay? So it just depends on how many you want and how long you want them to be. And how webbed out you want them to be. 
So I did draw a few extras in that one. So that's your basic stru structure. Well, this is where it attaches to the body. So what you have to do right here is you do need to leave it a little bit open right here where it attaches to the body. And usually you show the webbing kind of attaching to the body here too. So this is the curve of the webbing. So if you showed the body here, the body would attach like that. Okay, then this would be a big webbing and so on. The other thing you'll see is people will vary the length of these. Maybe this one's really long, maybe that one's really long, maybe this one's really short, but it's basically the same structure. And then the other side would be a mirror of that. Okay, I am going to show you some samples at the end and you can freeze on them to kind of look at them. But now this lesson is also about colored pencil and how to use it. If you don't have colored pencils, you could do this with watercolor. It's just not as effective. So I do recommend colored pencil. Um, I like it if you take an ultra fine Sharpie first and kind of define the spaces just a little stronger, giving them just a dark edge. But it's not really necessary. It's just my desire. Many artists do not, okay? I'm going to go ahead and do it on this one, but not the rest. And I'm just going to trace this structure and talk to you for a minute. So here's the thing that's nice about using a Sharpie after you draw it, is that anything you want to change a little bit, maybe you got a little bump right there and you're going to kind of smooth it out when you trace it. When you're tracing in ink and you make a mistake, don't try to fix it. Just keep going, pretend that you didn't. It probably will just fall into your picture. When you try to fix it, you actually make it look worse because it draws your eye to it when the line is thicker than the rest of the lines. I also like using a Sharpie because as soon as you're done, you can erase every line and you can see if you forgot something, you know, and if you had any lines where you pressed kind of hard on them and you, you didn't like the way they looked, you can get rid of them. Notice how I opened up all the ribbing up here. Not all artists do that. You don't have to do that. It's not that necessary. It's Most people won't even notice those little details. Another thing you'll sometimes see is maybe a little point at the end, like this. Just to make them look a little creepier. Just remember when you're drawing a dragon, it's really up to you what it looks like. That's what's so fun about it. And every time you draw them, you can draw them really, really different. Okay, so for the ribbing, which is all the little lines, you want to use two colors. I usually start with something very, very light. And when using colored pencil, you guys, it's really hard to get the lights back. So if you always start with light, then you can always get darker. But if you, and it's always great to use too much, more than you even need, because then you can blend into it. So always go with a lot of light. Like if you want something to look very shiny and you want to leave a big white spot on it, use a white um, colored pencil and put a lot on. You can't really erase them a lot, but you can a little bit lift them off. So um, it's better just to go super light. Then to do my dark line, I could go with kind of a medium or a darker green. You might even want to try it out if you're not sure. Kind of go with a medium and check it out. See if you're going to get the color you want. See how that gives just a nice little darker edge? I'm just tracing it. These are too small to really shade them. So all I'm going to do is trace it. And as I'm looking to it, it's just not bold enough for me. So I'm going to try just a little bit darker here. And I'm liking that better. It's a little bit stronger and I'm just going right over the ink. Now, if you didn't have ink, you'd go right over the pencil. So I think you should try both and see what you like better. I happen to like ink and then colored pencil on dragons, but everybody's a little different. And so all I did, you guys, was trace it. So I colored it light and then I traced it. That's about all the detail you can put in those. See how I let a little mistake there? Don't even try to erase it. Just let it blend into his wing. Now, the webbing is the cool part. I'm going to actually use four colors. So I'm going from light, a little bit darker, a little bit darker to darkest. 
So my first color is yellow, and like I said, too much is better than not enough. So I'm just going to diagonally put in my yellow, and I'm going to put a lot in. Even though this is where I want it the lightest, right down the center. It's just easier if I put more in. So I'm just adding it mainly down the center, but more than I need. Really pressing hard right here in the middle, because this is where I want it really light. That's going to be kind of like my shiny spot. Once I've got enough yellow in it, my next, I'll just kind of go in order, okay? Remember, you can layer the color. So I'm just going to come in here now, and I'm going to put in the yellow-orange. Now, when you do this, you want it to kind of curve into the other color. So I'm kind of angling it up and angling it up. So I'm going the opposite directions. This side I'm going up left, and this side I'm going up right. Now, if you got this done and you go, wow, you know, I really only need two colors for what I'm looking for. The yellow and the yellow orange is plenty of texture for me. You could stop here. Um, there's no reason you have to use four colors. I just tend to really work on my drawings and make them very detailed when I'm doing dragons, and that's just the way I want to do it. So remember, you're the artist here. Don't try to please me. Don't say, oh, Mrs. Johnson used four colors, so I gotta use four colors. That's not true. And sometimes I don't. I never do anything the same all the time. So there's my four colors. I don't really see much of the yellow orange over there. Now I'm gonna go to orange orange. And when I use the orange orange, I'm gonna really kind of stay in the edge. You can see how that makes that edge a lot stronger. And if I really wanted orange yellow, I would be stopping here. I would be totally stopping here and just putting in that nice orange to make it darker on the edge. It's almost tracing. And once I get it in, then I'm gonna just kind of look at it. And what I wanna do with mine is I wanna get it more orange up here at the top, bleeding in to the yellow in the front. So it looks deeper to lighter. So I've got a lot more orange up on the top here. Which doesn't give you much room with the little ones. So you can see how it goes light to orange and then the orange is just almost an outline on the outside edge. This wing's a little bit bigger so I'm going to put a little more, more orange into it. Could even go back to my yellow orange and kind of decide how I want these sides to look on this big one. I really want it to transition almost like it's glowing from light to dark. Just adding more of my yellow orange, really working on the transition here. Make sure you like each layer before you go on to the next layer. And then my last layer is red, and I mostly want it up here at the top. You can see I have that little triangle shape up here. I don't want it to just look stuck on like that though. So I'm just gonna blend it out lightly now. And it's gonna go into my wings. I don't want the transition to be too quick. So each time I go across it, I just press a lighter and lighter and lighter. And it, you know, color pencils take forever. This is one wing. Imagine you have the whole dragon. If you really want to do a good job with colored pencils, seriously, it takes forever. It's a really long drawing. Must Much faster to paint it or watercolor. Way, 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 way faster. But you don't get this cool detail that I think that's really fun. Now, I'm liking it, but I think I still want a little more red in it. So I'm just going to come right next to that green right here and put in a little more red on the edge. And that's the thing, I can't get it lighter, so you got to be kind of careful when you get it darker that you don't get it too dark too fast. I just decided to add a little bit more red with a light, light, light zigzag on each side. Yeah, I'm liking that better. So a little bit angled this direction, outlining it 
working right on that edge with the pressing hard, getting that nice edge. And I'm starting to think it looks pretty darn cool. Okay, so what are you going to do with those little spikes? Well, you're probably going to get one color on them for the most part. Maybe a little bit of a second color, but not much. Um, you could go with something totally different. But whatever you put in, you guys, you want to repeat it in your dragon at least several times. So it unifies your pictures. So this green I might put into his skin or the red I might put into his skin. Um, you could put it in you know, several sets of wings and that would really balance it out. But I'm using a complementary color scheme here with the reds and the greens. And so that's why it's also really, really bold. I'm thinking I, I may want to add some purpley tones in. So I'm just going to use a light purple here and color them in like this and see how they don't really show up much. And then I'm going to take a deep purple. This one's more like a red violet. Or, and I'm looking for colors right that I want to keep using, right? And I'm just going to put some of that color in underneath it and at the bottom. So you're not going to get a lot of color here. But it will pick up more if I use it elsewhere in the dragon. Another thing is always remember if you're liking it, kind of liking that color, I might even go up here and go, okay, I think I'll just outline it a little bit with this purple up on the top of the wing. Just give it a little more detail. See how that kind of defined that? Or maybe I want this edge to be purple just to give it a little bit more color. Now, if I'd used pencil, this would have been really important because it would have really showed up. Here, it just gives a little bit more change. So once you like your wing, and you're done. Now, let's go back to these ones. So this one here is just two colors, just two colors. This one is two shades of blue and orange and yellow. This one is kind of a purpley blue two shades and then it's got yellow with a little bit of yellow orange this one's got some pinks and red violet kind of colors and it actually has three colors in it and these this one up here actually has three but i didn't use the red and then all i did was a turquoisey color for the top of it that's all it is one color one color two and two for the ribbing so one and two for the ribbing. So you can see how you can get great effects with just two colors. It's just how elaborate you want to be. And now I'm looking at this one right here and I'm saying, gosh, you know, that looks pretty cool. But what if I took an even darker red and traced it? And that would make it even more bold. But sometimes, you guys, you don't have two shades of red or two shades of yellow. So you could say, well, you know, I don't have a deep red, but what's darker than that would be a purple. So if I took a really dark purple and put that there, it would really do the same effect. In fact, I might even like it more. So I'm gonna just outline it with a dark, deep purple. And then as I'm adding this color, I'm kind of like, oh wow, I think that looks really cool. I think it looks more dramatic. Why don't I put a little bit of purple in? So I decided to just slightly shade a little bit purple into it. Maybe you don't have enough room to shade both sides, so you just go on the top of it like this. Now, purple on top of orange gets a little muddy. Purple on top of red doesn't. So there, where there's a little bit of orange, it gets a little bit of muddy. But I'm not really worried about it because I think it looks kind of cool. So when I say muddy, it's not as bright of a color. That looks pretty cool. I'm liking that one better now. So you can see how just more pressure. See how this color right here, you guys, was white. I actually used a white colored pencil there. You're probably looking at my hands. I painted all day today. So <laughs> you're probably like, what in the heck? I can't get it off. But that's okay. It'll wear off. I've always got paint on my hands, so get used to it. Um, then looking up here at this guy, up here, he, I think he looks like he could use a little more work on his. And so I'm going to just put a, a darker teal in. Just because the wing is so light, I thought it might be cooler if this part was darker. And I think it, it does look better. So I'm just putting it in darker. 
So remember, you can always go darker with colored pencils. You cannot always go lighter. Color pencils. My favorite color pencils at all are Polychromos by Faber Castell. And they are available at Michael's and they're super expensive. So um, what I do recommend is if you decide to order some is um, have your parents make sure they have a 50 off coupon. Wait for it. And so this is what it looks like. This is only 24. I actually had a huge box and it was over a hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. Really expensive. I think this box at Michael's with regular price is like 75, but with a coupon, it's like 35. So I would not buy it. Um, I really, really, really like those. Those are my absolute favorite. They blend better and there's a lot of techniques that you can do with them that I haven't showed you yet. Um, and you can really blend some things. Uh, people always ask me, well, what about Prismacolors? I love Prismacolors. Don't get me wrong. The colors are bold. They just aren't as diverse. There's not as much you can do with them. Um, and they are even harder to deal with if you lose the light. With this colored pencil, I can actually do some little tricks to get it lighter. But with the wax base, they're wax base, not oil base. Polychromos are oil base, and the other ones are wax base. And the wax base ones are harder to do extra tricks with. So I'm, they're, I'm not as huge a fan, but they're really good. Don't get me wrong. They're really good. That would be my second choice. Okay. So I'm just picky. Anyway, so with that said, this is the cool ones. And if you guys have any questions about dragons, my next dragon video will be a whole dragon. And I will be talking about how to twist his body. So I hope you come for that one. Okay. Talk to you soon.